volume number five, teach the teacher. This is the very last one, I promise. And what we're doing is we are actually measuring and seeing how well Matt did when he put the clubs together, okay? Measuring and ensuring that is good is a very, very important part of how clubs play. We're gonna cover some of that. But again, if you haven't seen any of the rest of this Teach the Teacher where I take somebody that has not built clubs before and we take him through his own set and we undo it and put it back together again, go back to the volume one and watch what we do all the way through. And again, you know, this is, a, this is a really great hobby. It can be a really great business if you have the business mind for it. So, you know, pay, you know, pay attention. You, there is tons, tons, tons of information to be gleaned from these videos as far as club making, club building go. And I, and I you know, invite you to like and subscribe to this channel. That way you can learn more about these topics of golf club repair, golf club reviews, and golf club fittings, okay? And again, wait till the end, and we're gonna talk about how they actually worked for him. Last volume, we're checking our work. How did, how did Matt do? That's the, last, that's the title of this one. How did Matt do? So what we're doing is we're doing total weights, we're doing swing weights here, and then we're gonna do loft and lies. Now, prior to that, he had me extend a few and we did some bending, so they're not all going to be the same. So we're gonna try and get them into spec for Matt when we get all done, and then we will truly be done at that point. So, let's get started. Starting with a two iron, total weight. Four eleven. All right, let's see what an inch and a half does in length. Swing weight's kind of a unique term. Look at that. About D3 right there. All righty, so on swing weight, length impact swing weight by three every half of an inch. So we had an inch and a half, so that's plus nine swing weight points. So if we started out at D2, we're looking at E something, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about the weight portion of it. That assumes a 120 gram shaft. This is a 95 gram shaft, so about every nine points, and 120, 95, so about 25 points. If you went, it's about two and a half swing weight points the other direction. So now we're six and a half swing weight points up. But then we add the jumbo grip, which weighs a monstrous, what, 78 grams? Yes. And we assume a 40 some gram. Mm -hmm. So when we assume a 40 some gram, and this is now four, uh, the 30 into that, we're coming back and we're subtracting all those swing weight points that were just added for length. So you're gonna get a really balanced out club and out of that super massive heavy, mm -hmm. and a lot of the weight will be right here because that's where a lot of the weight's indicated at. So we now, started out at... If you had a regular grip, how much difference? It would be massively heavy so you, swing weight. Okay. 411 so with this almost, one too. It's almost like a, that's the oh, this is the two. We the did two. that yeah, one. We did that one. Duh. All right, let's go to the next one. The three. The uh, yeah, and that's the root. So that's how the swing weight. That's the reason why we take all that on here. Four nineteen. Four nineteen point five. Does it matter the point five? No, not really. We're we're gonna do it. All right, slide it down to it balances out. That way. Nope, the other way. Too much. Keep going. But right in the middle of that five. See what it does. Oh, see it's starting to come up? Yeah. So try a little bit there. A little bit more the other way. So that's a D5. Close. Yep. Well, D4. Even I went that one too far. About D4 and a half. There you go. Let's call it D4. So D3, D4. Okay. Yep. Now, should we assume that everything else should follow into that? In that, in that range, okay. if, if we've made a good set, it'll be Close. a swing weight point, plus or minus, either way of the one in the middle. 422? 422. All of, these, all of these should weigh heavier. As we go up. Yeah. Look at that. About D4? D3. Uh, give it D3. Okay. It's not quite making D4. 431. Now the swing weight's based on a, a, I believe it's a 14 inch fulcrum. Look at that, D4. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why it balances out. Yeah. Swing weight was started by a guy in Kansas City. Uh, 
Kenneth. And uh, we've used that because that's basically the only thing we could measure with. 436? Right on the button. And, uh, and we've got different ones. There's low rhythmic and pyrorhythmic. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, this one may be a little heavier. D5? Is that what it looks like to you? Yeah. Or is it? I, I'm looking at an angle here, so it looks D5 to me. It was D5. Yeah, right. it was just on the 5. All right. I would say if it rounded up to the D5. 443? Four, 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 yep. Now well, we're starting to get a little heavier. Mm -hmm. Still in that D5 range. Now it's a little half lighter. There we go. D5? Yep. A D5.2. <laughs> I'll put the point if two we, down for you. <laughs> if we have the if we had the digital scale, we'd be able to see that. 450. 450. So our weights are up there. Yeah. D5. D5. So I'm glad that no. now does that is that something that I would always look at because like another build or is it just a build by build situation? Uh, it depends on the the stuff that you use. 466. Yeah. Uh, if you had 95 gram shafts and they weren't specifically like a counterbalance kind of thing. Yeah. D5. Did we have a counterbalance situation with the Wishons or was it a? No, it was just the we were using super heavy grips with yeah. lots of extra tape. <laughs> With the jumbo maxes at yep. one point. <laughs> 475. That's the 58, right? Um, yeah, that's got to be the 50. That's the. That one's going to be heavier. Look at that one. Yeah. That What was that one? Four. 470. Yeah. Oh, look, you hit a. Was that D9 or yeah. easier? Right, this is go, the. Go back to that. I, I didn't get that number. Oh. Well, the last one's going to be E yeah. whatever. E1. Sandwich D6 or D7. Mm -hmm. All right, so there we go. Okay. So we put that one right there. Yep. All right. And we so got one more. We got one more. The 50. Or no. Oh, we did no. that one. Okay. Okay. No. So that's where the. You, missed, you came down here. Yeah. We just need to move that okay. one up. Okay. So it went progressively from D3, D4, D5, D6. Yeah. As the heads got a little heavier, our weights went in line with them. And as they show the big jumps, we show the big jumps in the swing weight. Yep. So they're not too bad there. I'd much rather have your wedges heavier anyway. Mm -hmm. Over there. All right, so on to Lofton Lives. Okay. All right, let's take them out there. All right, so we're in the last pit of this. We got Matt, he's gonna be the, our dictation guy in that he's gonna write it down. He's told me what he wants. He wants us to start at 58 and we're gonna be two flat. So 62 and 58, everything will be based off of this with four degree increments going up the clubs and staying two degrees. So. The other part of this where it makes it kind of, uh, we've got to really be careful of what we're looking at is, That's there's the pitching wedge. Yeah. <laughs> this pitching wedge sandwich thing is yeah. going to throw me off. Yeah, me too. All right, so the sandwich needs to be 54. 54. And then we'll leave this one at 62, the next two at 62 because yeah. they're only a quarter of an inch off of each other. Okay. And it is 62. So 62 for the sand? And it is 54. So nothing going there. We like that. All right, so at 52, now the next club, which is this. It's the 50, so this is the pitching wedge. Yep, so this one needs to be 50. Yeah. It was 48, we bent it to 48 at one point. All right, so we want it back to 50. Yeah. All right. And it is 47. 47, okay. And the right Y angle. So and that would still be a... Well, we're going to bend it to 50. Okay. Because you want a 54 and 4 degrees, right? Yep. All right, so we're going to weaken it back again. Yep. In order to weaken it, we need it to go this way. And those have to, those move easily, don't they? Well, yeah, but the thing with the, the thing with doing these and that we got to pay particular attention to is that the chrome on these things is a little old mm -hmm. and chrome when you go to move it a little too much spider webs and that's why we don't want spider webbing so did you get it to 50 or i did okay all right so here we go so now we need it was a 62 lie right yep so we're going 61 and a half and then we're going to go 46. yep 
So this would almost play like my Wishan pitching wedge. Yes. Because my Wishan pitching, pitching wedge is 45. Yep. So all and these were bent strong. We're going to bend them back. Yep. So it's at 43 and we need to go to 46. Yep. Let's see what I got out of that. Mm -hmm. Lie was right? Yep. I got 44. Okay. So let's, a couple more. Yep. And I think they were bent strong because of the not having a pitching wedge. Probably. I just take it real easy because of the, I'm taking it easy because of the age of these things. <laughs> 45, one more. Unless we want to start at 45, do you want to do it there? It's up to you. I mean, they're your clubs, you want 45 and go four from there, it's up to you. I can get you one more. Let's, let's do there. Let's go 45. 45 it is. Yep. And then that would be the same as the... Okay. All right. So the next one would be our 8. Now at 45, are you wanting 41 now? 41. Okay. 41 and 61 and a half? Or 61. 61 and a half was the 9. Ah, okay. So these are, these are ultimately going to be one club weaker than the Wishans. Correct. And you said 61, right? No, yeah, 61 for the 8. And we want, what was the number we were looking for? 41. Oh, good. I'm only off by one. Yep. Some of them we didn't bend because we never put the grip on them. So some of them should be okay. back to the close. 41? Yep. Not yet. It didn't want to move for me. So when you do bending, normally you bend with both hands in order so that you can feel the thing moving. And normally the back hand is the one that's providing the force and the front hand is providing the feel. At least that's the way I've always done it. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, so we're at 41? Yep. And when, you, and when you do the bending, uh, you gotta be, you gotta listen and you gotta look and you gotta feel because and you can hear it cracking, that's a bad thing. <laughs> now you can hear, you can hear the glue cracking every once in a while, and you got to kind of work your way through that. But uh, the shaft cracking makes a whole different sound, or the and the metal cracking makes a whole different sound. And then you can feel it popping when it goes through there, even through the big bending bar. Alrighty, so what does this need to be? So this is the seven iron, 37. so it needs to be 60 and a half lie. Yep. All right, this one was up, so we got to bend it down a little bit. Yeah, 60 and a half lie. And this will actually be the same, so the lies are going to be the same Correct. As, the, as the thing. It's just going to be the lofts. 60 and a half, and then the and loft needs to be... be four off of 41, so that's 37. 37. 37. So a bit weaker than what they are now. Yeah. And that just makes it uniform, and that'll be because yes. the two iron will actually be a three iron. Yes. With the modern day or whatever, not the modern day lofts, because I don't have a 43, 43 degree pitching wedge. <laughs> yeah, just because you don't even have one. Yeah, 37, right? Yep. All right, so the six is going to be... We have 60 and a half for the lie. That was with the Wishan hybrid. Well, we just keep, what we'll do is we'll just keep taking off the half right. a degree. Okay, so it would be a 60 if it's off of a half a degree. Mm -hmm. 60 and then what, 33? Uh, it'll be 33. Huh? We're got, huh. Look at that. We're there. Got that one. All right, so. So these will actually be a little bit, a little bit flatter than the Wishans. Then yeah, 60, but, the, uh, but the irons are going to look a little yeah. different to you. Yeah, the because so of the iron. So 50, now we're at 59 and a half for the five iron. All right, 59 and a half in the loft we and want. And then 33 minus four is 29. 29. And we're at 27. Weaken that bad boy up a little bit. So why are we doing this in the first place, Matt? Because I don't think we didn't really discuss what the heck you're doing this for. 
This is a, this is, I was, because I play hybrids up to the six. So I, I, my Wishans, which we're, we've been talking about for a while. Mm -hmm. I have a driver, I have a three wood, a seven wood, then I go four, five, six hybrids. And a lot of people equate hybrids to people who don't normally play decent golf and I was hand on my hybrid and they hit it onto the green. And I said, that's why I play them because <laughs> you could hit them onto the green. So my buddies have been saying, you can't do that with a normal five iron. And I said, okay, we'll take that bet. And then, so I didn't tell them this is what I was going to do, but. Uh, they just said five iron. Yes, they didn't say one didn't specially say, designed for yes, you. Yes. So. All right. So the five. So 29. That's right. We did that minus one. Minus four. 29, right? Yep. So 25 and... So the 4-iron will be 59. We're at, no, we're at the 5. No. Yeah. The 5-iron... Nope, I'm at the 4-iron. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So the 4-iron is going to be 59 lie. Mm-hmm. And then 25, 25 degrees. All right. So we're just a little too flat. Yeah. So that's the whole thing is to be able to... So we're doing this to win a bet. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> So they called you out because you were whooping on them, and you were hitting them. We're hitting the hybrid where it was supposed to go. Yes. Oh, by the way, just the way it's supposed to be done. Twenty-five, right? You said yes. For that? Yep. yep. And and now we're making a set of irons yeah, that. So the three you, should be fifty. Do we want to go? For, let's just keep going. All right. So it'll be fifty-eight and a half, or yeah, fifty-eight and a half. Okay. And it'll be twenty-one degrees. All right. So we need to go just a hair stronger on this one. So this is going to this is going to replace. This is going to be like the se the like the seven wood, which works out perfectly. And the lie angle needed to be uh, fifty-eight and a half. Okay. Twenty-one. Yep, degrees. I got twenty-one. Yeah, I didn't tell him I was putting acro shafts in them. So. <laughs> and fifty-eight. Good there. Yeah. Last one. And this is the two iron. So this will be 58 lie. And 21 minus 4 is what? 17 degrees. And it's going to be like the 5. 17. Yep. And we said what? 50? 50... 58. 58, 58 lie, 17 degrees. Flat. All right. Hmm. So the set I'm going to use, do you remember the SLDR? Oh yeah. Yeah, how you made me that. Yeah. I put a three, a, a high launch three wood head into the five wood. Uh huh. Because the five wood was 19 degrees, right. but you had it down to 17. So that's going to be a 15. So my three wood will be 15. That's going to be 17. And then I'll use the SLDR driver. Cool. Yeah. All right. So the last bit and everything that we do at McGolf is we do put the layer of wax on it. So we're going to go back in here. And we're going to talk about our way through all the videos. So here we are at the end, just like we do every other time. We're cleaning off the, the wax that, we're, that we put on here to give them the last little bit of shine, uh, last bit of protectant. It gives it a good look, too. The, the Founders Club, obviously, is, a, is an older club that Matt thinks are still around. I don't know. But... <laughs> We, uh, we put the Acra ICWT, which is a constant weight shaft, 95s in them, and they come discrete lengths. And it turns out there's plenty of room. And, uh, and as we figured, the, the uh, shafts were uh, parallel and discrete length, which is really kind of different. But the founders clubs were not, so we ended up ringing out and putting them in there, which in reality, looking backwards, I think that was a pretty good game call. So these will not get reshafted again. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then we went through the basics of club making and, and some the the precision elements of it with the flowing and the checking out of the the flexes and the you know and making sure the length is correct because that is very much paramount to consistency. So we got a lot done and this is the final installment of teaching the teacher. And it, and it helps you get to see what somebody who's just getting started uh, into it, uh, you know, can that might have the same questions that you might have while you're watching all this. So, Mr. Matt, what yes, do we Mr. what Jim. do we th what do we think? 
like I said, the the biggest avenue is to get over the you have to be not gentle with it. It is still a, a craftsmanship idea. Yes, you want precision and all that, but you cannot be gentle. You've got to figure it out and it's experience. When you watch all of these parts, you'll notice that after a while you get into a rhythm and that's a huge aspect of it. And Jim makes it look so easy, but he's been doing it forever and that's and it's very nice to watch a true craftsman do their job because they have gone through the trials and tribulations. They've learned from all of those. But the big thing is to just go out and do it. It's like anything. If you want to learn how to do this sort of work or this sort of hobby, go and do it. <laughs> That's it, right? If you've never put a grip on and you are paying people to put your grips on, go buy a few grips and do it. Test it out. Now there's, like, and I've said this in other videos as well, is when you want to go do something like this, some people will put, you know, dip their toe in the water and like, like Matt has the shaft clamp in a vise. Excellent way to get started. That's how I got started. And then there's people that will dive head first into the deep end with this stuff and go with an air clamp and do the whole nine yards. <laughs> it's purely preference, right? There's no wrong or rhyme to this. It, but as Matt says, it's the, the thing that helps you in this is knowing your equipment, getting some time with it, getting into that rhythm so you know how your equipment works, right? Just like, and I will give, it, I'll give Matt some props. I am set up left-handed, me being a lefty, and he worked in there and got it all done as a righty. So if he can pull that off as a righty, you know it can be done, <laughs> okay? And, and so that's really what we want to know. Know your equipment. Know your process. There's a workflow that I just took him through in order to do it, and we kept doing it. You know, you know, put it in there, and measure, make sure the line's right, mm -hmm. get the frequency, get the flow, make the leather, make sure you get the length again. Come back here, cut it, put it down, put it back over here, in order to make things go for an efficient flow in order to get a club built. Now, we started at what nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. We started at nine o'clock, and here it is, two thirty. Yeah. And we even stopped for lunch. <laughs> now I use the tour glue. The tour glue makes all the difference. Now is it 100% cured? No, but it makes it workable such that they can take their clubs with them and it's all good to go. So it, it, 11 clubs in under six hours. That's, that's pretty impressive, even with doing the videos <laughs> and doing all the other stuff. So we did a lot, we went along very, 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 very well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so if you got any questions about this, just put them in the show notes below. Uh, watch us. We do the, and Matt's on there religiously, is we have a uh, live stream. And the live stream is what's in my drawers golf talk. And it's what's in the drawers of these, of these places in here in my shop. It talks about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, golf club uh, fittings, and then all kinds of other stuff in the golf world from a lot people all over, the, all over the map. This man gives me the best questions to start off almost every day. <laughs> and and every month, it's every Monday, 1730 Eastern time. Uh, join us, right? Join us, I think you'll like it. Okay guys, so there, hopefully if, you have, if this is the first one you see, go back and see the other three uh, versions of it. So they actually turned out pretty good. I thought the irons looked very, very good. They played very, very good. And according to Matt, and here's where the big, he sent me a note and he's on the live streams that we do, that he shot a 75 and a 76 with these things. Now, Founders Clubs, it had a two iron, went down to the pitching wedge, and we bent them a little bit stronger to not necessarily modern lofts, but close enough. And he shot a 75, 76 with these things right out of the box and actually played the two iron. You know what they say about the two iron. So it, was the experiment successful? I would say so, but he says he lost the bet. I'm not sure what the bet was, but he lost the bet. So again, thank you for watching all of the uh, volumes that have been on the channel. Thank you for watching the channel. And if you haven't seen it past this part, like and subscribe and go back and check out some of that stuff. This is about a week away from Christmas. So again, uh, Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year and in, enjoy, your, enjoy your companies that you have. And again, let's see your scores go low.